And now here's the third video of our 2013 in review. Yep, we just finished talking about the Kickstarter games, which hopefully will be coming out soon. Cross yep. fingers, knock on wood. And now we're going to talk about the games that came out in 2013. Yep, there and, was a lot of good ones. Yeah, and then uh, the indie games started to become a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a number of games from spending multiple platforms. We have a list right in front of here. And we'll Cross just, gen. Yep, and we will add to the list as we go. <laughs> so, There's so many games, we can't talk about them all. Yeah. Sorry. Put in the comments below if we missed your game. <laughs> YouTube subscribe. Or, or, yeah. <laughs> The first game that the really big note is Bioshock Infinite. Yes, people have been waiting forward for this one for a long time. Like like a four or five years or something. It yes. sure felt like it. Uh, <laughs> and then it essentially became essentially oh it's Bioshock except it's in, in the, the sky. sky. Um, I think they should have called it something else besides Bioshock, but it has a lot of things including like time the, manipulation. There's a lot of things about the about the game that is pretty much Bioshock elements to yes. it, all the way up to the whole ha uh, the lighthouse element to it. That was relatively significant and plot spoilers which we won't discuss but the the game gets uh crazy gets it, the story gets it makes itself sound much smarter than maybe it is uh I thought, it's also i've heard it's very it's far more shooter based this time around yeah there's good the really good parts about it uh the there's some really good characters there's just some parts that just seem maligned at some points. Fire Emblem Awakening. This is one of those games we never played. <laughs> yes, uh, we're not really big on art, uh, strategy RPGs, especially ones where if you die, you die. Well, luckily, in um, this game, uh, they got rid of that as a casual mode where you don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, and on top of that, you also create your own character, and there's all this DLC elements to expand and have characters who, from the original series, come in as extra right. characters. characters. And apparently there's also a lot of relationships where yeah. you can, your characters can can get married and that creates kids and it's a whole lot of craziness in this game. Um, apparently it's the best in the series. Yeah. And this was going to be the last Fire Emblem game and it did like amazing. Yeah, it did very well. So so I think they it'll be back. In fact, there's that crossover game. The yeah, SMT Cross Fire Emblem. That's, that's hopefully this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then comes our first indie game. Mm -hmm. uh, Monaco, It's Yours Is Mine. Now this game, I uh, saw for a long time. I've been waiting for it to come out. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it was hectic. Yeah, it was, it was brought up for Xbox Live Arcade and then subsequently for PC. Uh, they've added these extra contents. I think they didn't add it to the, P the Wii Xbox Live Arcade version. But the PC version is like a zombie mode now and extra content added on top of that. A lot of characters. What's, what's like, really, the mole is broken. He's OP. Yeah. One of the interesting things about the game is that you, not, the missions are actually in stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and it originally just follows one character, and, but you can also have these extra, these other story modes for different characters. For different characters. And all of this has cooperative play, mm -hmm. and uh, you can play on the, the same system, or you can play over uh, on online. And uh, really solid experience. It's a very co uh, convoluted experience, though. When you're looking at it from first, there's, when there's a lot of people playing, the lights and everything. If you're not paying attention, you can get really lost in that game. There's a lot yeah. going on in them, and that's to show how in depth the game is, despite how simplistic the graphics are. Which yeah. I think work in its favor. Yeah, it's a really fun local multiplayer game because you get to yell at people as you play it. So What's yours uh, is mine. Yeah, and then we have Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Yeah, it's so interesting to see a sequel to a game that came out 10 years ago. Yes, and it was a very good one. I, I just really liked it. Yeah, Next Level Games took the concept of Luigi's Mansion, uh, focused on it on the 3DS, and made it more mission-based. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's not the best thing. I, I liked it a little bit more open-ended, like the original. Yeah, but there but, was also five areas. Yes, and they, they made up for it by having, each time you go into the missions, there was something different about the world. So yeah. A little change up. To I it. wasn't too fond of the, the music, felt a little dull. Music, music was was not well. Luigi's Mansion only had like one song. Yeah, but it was a really through. good song. I, I like some of it. Um, there wasn't. We did miss out on some boss ghosts. Yeah, the boss ghosts I think were not as good in this game. But I thought that the the gimmicks, the animation, the the how just how yo, how good uh, Luigi is as a character. It's yeah. like he, he when he's scared, he's like, "Hi, he's Luigi's crazy, he's a great yep. character." It right, makes him. A better character than Mario. Yeah. It's funny that this was the game that started off the year of Luigi, but we hadn't even known the year of Luigi was happening. Yeah, like, Nintendo just threw it at us. Um, and on top of that, the multiplayer is actually really fun. Uh, it's um, actually, and what's really cool was our first experience was actually playing a demo that we that we were actually we had on our systems because someone was had the game and well, we were we were we were, we were playing in multiplayer and it was really good actually. And the fact that you can download the multiplayer to your system allows you to play even after the other yeah. person with the cartridge leaves. I thought it was a very good idea. Hope they implement it into other games. They might yeah. not, but they will. There was there's some problems where it disconnects at times, but I think the multiplayer was very fun. Yep, very addictive. And uh, it was with cooperative and counteroperative. Yeah, it was really nice. Gone Home. 
This one is a PC indie game, right? Yeah, PC indie game where you play first person in a house with perceivably no real enemy, but you get to experience this stream of consciousness to what happened at this place. You pick up objects and you hear dialogue about what happened or about that object in general, and that leads to a, a, a network of discussions and insight. Yeah, so it's really more a discovery game, much like how Journey was last year, uh, except a completely different experience. <laughs> Journey was... Journey, Way Journey was about was a platforming experience where you learned of this, and the sand was gorgeous. Yeah, and, but this is a game where you experience the world around you without necessarily having to focus too much on the actual game element to it. Uh, I know it won a few awards, uh, and unfortunately, I am only once again speaking outside of uh, my experience. But it was a very solid game with great storytelling, is my understanding. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Was, oh, okay, sorry. Tomb Raider rebooted. I don't know what they should have called rebooted. it. Rebooted. Rebooted. Uh, basically, Tomb Raider, um, it's a reboot. It's supposed to be a prequel to the whole franchise. Maybe start some new series. Um, mm -hmm. It's a definitive edition coming out. I can't believe they actually called it that. Yep. Um, and if, it basically, you watch their uh, cross get it hurt pretty badly throughout the yeah, majority of I it. I think even during E3 when they showed it off again, I was like, it's pretty much just Tomb Ra uh, just Lara Croft getting beaten up a lot. And, oh, oh no, I gotta kill someone! And I, I've heard people, reviewers, talk about this too, how disconnected the story is from this. Because she's so distraught about killing someone, and all of a sudden and you're you next like, you know it, you're taking your bow now and headshotting. I've, mind you, I've only really watched like let uh, quick plays of this game, but it ter looks like the the span of the ending points of the game is just a whole bunch of shooting mechanics. Just you get caught, time to shoot enemies as they chase you down. Well, there's also a lot to of shoot enemies with a bow and arrow. It's bow and arrow the game. And there, well, yeah, it, there's a lot of um, there are some crypt areas where you have to solve puzzles and stuff, Not and you find lot. artifacts. And I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's a very open-ended game. Where you can, uh, but it's still kind of, you fall around a pathway, you find yeah, an exterior. It's open-ended to the point as in like it's like a fan-out, where you start here, you can go all these other ways, but you're going to end up in the same spot in the well, end. I think most games are that. Yeah. It looks good. It actually underperformed to Square Enix's requirement. Of course they did. Uh, but they, they asked for it. Like, five, what, like five million? Five million. million. That's probably why the definitive edition oh. is being made. Yeah, which looks good. Uh, mm -hmm. Though it's odd that we're seeing cross-gen things like that. Anyway, uh, I think it's weird that we're seeing uh, an expansion or an upgrade to this game literally a year, year after it after released. In fact, isn't it coming out like in a week or so? It might be out this... I think it's out this month, isn't it? Yeah, it's in January. Oh, wow. Because it came out in like June or something last year. Well, what can you do? You can play Injustice Gods Among Us. Yes, a fighting game starring superheroes. Yep. Uh, this was crazy. It was surprising. Um... Actually, it wasn't entirely surprising since the last game they really worked on, besides the Mortal Kombat, was Mortal Kombat Cross DC. <laughs> I think it was eventually leading up to this. It was like, oh, let's just take the characters from that game and make it into a, like, a much darker experience. You so can actually have people well, die. I remember, I remember one, one, when they did the crossover game, people were really upset that the superheroes wouldn't actually kill the opponent. Yeah, they just they beat like, up. They just beat them up because, like, <laughs> oh, they got evil by some dark energy and they attack and they don't kill anybody. Like, yeah, that's... That's lame. Well, here we go. Now now everyone's badass and kicking the crap out of yeah. each other. And I think it works here. The story, uh, I, I I watched it. It was pretty good. I'm not a good at fighter, fighting games. so I, But it, it does look like it's an action-packed fighter, and I heard a lot of good things about it. And there's this new edition coming out with it. I think the, the thing that already did come out, didn't it? I don't even know. There's one that came out for the, the, the PS... Uh, there's like a, like a Game of the Year edition, a like yeah. complete edition with new characters. I know the Wii U version had a lot of problems... Getting DLC out yeah, for it. I think it still it does have problem getting DLC um, out for But it. Uh, I hear it was very good. Uh, again, the, the team that made it knows how to make good fighters. And yep. It's really action packed. I suspect they're going to be making a sequel. Add -on, a se not a, some I, I'm thinking sequel. It's, I could see them see. I could see them see them. Like, I could see them doing it. Yeah. Guacamole. Yes, a Metroidvania style game on the Vita, and I own a Vita. And I didn't buy this. Why? I have. I have. I'm a, it's also on PC. Oh, I really that. like Metroidvania games, and I've heard a lot of great things about this game. Uh, you, you yeah, we saw. It, yeah, we saw it uh, two years ago at PAX East. Yes, and then we saw it at PAX East the year before. Yeah, and I, I played it, and it was fun. Yeah, you play as a luchador, going into a Metroidvania style experience, fl uh, phasing between two different worlds, mm -hmm. trying to save El Presidente's daughter from like the it. clutches of evil. It's great, and as you look at evil chicken. And stuff. Yeah, I. I Found that uh, the uh, the memes element to it, where you saw like these all these internet memes and posters, little much. Uh, they tried yeah. they tried a bit too much of the eh eh sort of humor, um, where references themselves became the humor. Uh, 
it's better if they have just humor for the sake of humor. I mean, they have a few pieces like yeah, that. Yeah, they do have a good part of that. Uh, the cooperative element's pretty good, but here it's not as good as playing it solo. Well, I can imagine that with the, with the shifting and It's also a, a brawler at heart, more so than... You mentioned Metroid. Uh, there's still a lot of fighting element to it. Well, well. You're a luchador. You're, if you don't fight, you're not a luchador. What are you, then? You're a runador? You run away from everything? You're like a matador. That's what you do. That's what you become if you don't you don't. Well, technically, matadors do stab bulls. We're talking too much about these these, these terms. And then there's a game that many believe is the game of the year of, this, of 2013, and that is The Last of Us. Yeah, so Naughty Dog has been you know pretty much the king of action games on the PlayStation platform. Yes, Uncharted 2 is my favorite, by the way. In fact, the Uncharted 2 team is the team that actually worked on The Last of Us while Uncharted 3 was in development. Mm -hmm. uh, the Last of Us is an action-adventure game where you play as a, a gr old grizzled man in a, in a post-apocalyptic world being run by thieves and miscreants and being craw and full of crawling with... Mutagenic uh, monsters. Monsters use the mold. It's called clickers. It's it's mon it basically fungus infects the human race that and there this is a real fungus. It's real fungus. I look look it up. It, it affects ants and ants and insects. Oh, no, there's not ants. Insects. Insects in general. And there's a one particular fungus per insect. And the theory is what happens if there's one that eventually develops to infect humans, and that's what it turns out to be. And um, it it evolves around uh, Joel, I think his name is. Yeah, I can't remember. The yeah, it's name. Joel. Um, he's the grizzly man who's basically lost everything and now has to be evil because he has to in this evil world. And he has to escort this young girl, Ellie, Ellie, uh, to this across country because she's immune and she might be the, the key to saving humanity. Yep. Uh, outside of that, the environment was really bl splendid. There's yes, a lot of a lot of really good. Yeah, it's not mono, it's world. not monochrome, which is something I, I really didn't like with a lot of post post apocalyptic games. Well, I think Uncharted's done a good job. Uncharted, Uncharted. <laughs> Naughty Dog has yeah. done an amazing job, not going with the usual color schemes and really picking some really nice colors. And they show different t uh, uh, seasons throughout the game. Yeah, and uh, there's different like you get to customize your weaponry and you have to the clickers, which is one of the types of uh, yeah. the, the infected. You have to throw them. Uh, like get glass bottles out of the way, so that way because they they, 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 they they only hear which way they click. No. And so that's a big thing. And there's really the, the core of the game, even though the, that's the, the gameplay elements yeah. of the game, the real focus is on is the, the relationship between the two characters yeah. and how it develops over time and it moves people. Yeah. And the ending was a shocker to a lot of yeah. people. My only concern is that this game will just bring about a whole series of games where like you play it. as an, an old man who's lost it all protecting a young girl. Well, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I hope, I hope <laughs> not. Well, uh, it's, Uncharted it's 4. You're gonna see it with his daughter or something. Which, like, I'm wasn't before it was announced. Max Payne Seven. Um, there was also um, there's all they just announced actually a DLC for this. Uh, yeah, where it takes place, which is a prequel, prequel to this, where it happens to Ellie before this all yep. happens. So uh, yeah, as you can tell, uh, got a lot. It's got over 200 Game of the Year awards. Clearly, it, it, it moved a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Just, Again, no PS3, we can play it, but we know what it looks like. We've seen it. And yeah, and we definitely we, give them. We believe. We understand the hype is the best way to put <laughs> we, it. We understand quality when we see it. So let's go back to the indie games with Papers, Please. Yes, we, I remember seeing this one. It was still in like beta. Yeah, it was showing off a trailer of it when I first saw it. And uh, in the game you play as a, a gatekeeper of the Border Patrol uh, for a, a warring Eastern European country during the Cold War. Yes. Uh, essentially, your job is to accept people into the country. Or deny or them. Or deny them. Uh, and the idea is you have to make enough people pass through they pay money. you to make enough money to pay for your family which ha uh, which includes you your children your wife your grandmother and among other your mother and so forth and so on uh and this doesn't mean there's no rent, and you have to pay all these other Food, things. And if they and get sick, you get pay medication if they get sick. Yeah, and but un unfortunately, there are so many stacking regulations that keep on being thrown onto you yes. that things start to get fuzzy. Like they start saying, like you, they need to come in. Like, no one from this country, no matter what, or no one, no one who looks like this or has this issue. You know, you have to keep on checking for work permits, and you can only make three mistakes before you're fired for the day or something. like and that. And there's also um, ones like you have to make sure validate. Uh, symbols and work orders yeah. to make sure that their paperwork is real, which is, by the way, is papers, please, because they're asking for your papers. Yeah. You also have to detain certain people, decide uh, who is real, you have to validate dates with each other, so this yeah. is really about really keeping your eyes out for the and details. The and shows you how hard it is to yeah. keep the dates. And on the flip side, it comes down to a mode of empathy, because you're going to find scenarios where you can't let the person through traditionally, but the person has a story entwined, like someone who wants to meet their dying son, or something like that. 
Uh, and so you can let them through, but that would be a, a, re a violation. But in turn, that could end up being a, be a boon to you later on in the game. Uh, the question is, do you want to be empathetic to people, or do you want to maintain a strategy to the point where you can actually survive? Are you a robot, or are you a human? Papers, please. But you know what you're not? Not an animal. You're not a raccoon that tries to sell you property. Yes. Well, you don't sell yourself property. We're talking about Animal Crossing New Leaf. Yes, it came out for the 3DS, and it was very well received. Yes, uh, the game came out last year in Japan, and was a huge success. Came out in America, pretty good success as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the game is just like any Animal Crossing game. You are... Uh, brought into this new uh, this new Village. town where all these other animals live, but there's a new twist. They believe you to be the mayor, even though you weren't planning to be the mayor. They just you're the mayor, now. and you actually get a letter on that says, "I was the one to be the mayor, but then I kind of decided you do a better job." So here you go. Uh, introduces Isabel, uh, a little Your secretary, a secretary, secretary dog. Uh, it's really cut. It's a really cute game. Well, I think Animal Crossing in general is a very cute game. Yeah. Um, they have some new elements, like you can go swimming, and you can. Uh, uh, the, the island has changed a bit. It has many uh, games on. Many it. games for multiplayer, and you can get in new collectibles, deep sea animals. Yep. And, and uh, the, uh, a lot of the elements of this game is that now you have the ability to create ordinances. So in case you uh, you you uh, work late or something like that. Oh, right, in real life, not in yeah, the game. in real life, and you want to be able to get to the stores, you can actually let them set up. You know those ordinances to work late. You have to pay a certain amount of money to do it, or you, and you can also be like, I want to build a bridge on, on this on part this of the spot. river, so I don't longer have to walk around oh, the town. To get or there. you want to build a, 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 a campfire, a campfire, or another store. All of these things you can do, or Rossetti's uh, or Rossetti's reset, reset, shop. reset shop, which was shut down. Was really poor poor I feel I feel it's very. Uh, very sad story. Yeah. The problem is, of course, how much money it takes to build these projects. Yes, of So course. it comes down to you wanting you have to keep on playing this game to make enough money to build these things, or you have to cheat the onion system. Oh, well, no, turnips. The, the, it's the, the, the it's stock the market. The, sto the stock market. Uh -huh. uh, it's a good game. Um, there's also some uh, also, online play where you can actually go to people's friends. Yep. Oh, and there's also the dream house where you get to see, see people. There's a lot of things that this game adds to it to make it something better than City Folk by far. <sighs> Now, I've been waiting for this game for, I think, ten years. Well, no, the series had been about ten years, but Peak with 3. Ten years. <laughs> Peak with 3 uh, is this, the third game in the Peak series. Yes. Uh, it was first kind of announced in 2008, which is yes. five years ago. It was like, he was just saying, I think it was just off the cuff, like, you know what, we're making another Peak We're game. making Peak with 3. Like, woo! And then well, like, it, it didn't help the fact yeah. that the team that makes Peak is also the team, team that makes New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, so, so they, 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 kind of, they kind of sideswiped. It was originally going to be a launch title for the Wii U, and it got delayed all the way until August. Yeah, so uh, thanks uh, a lot, Nintendo. Uh, um, anyways, the game is surprising because you don't play as Captain Olimar in nope. this one. You play as three new characters from a completely different planet, all for the, the desire to find food for their dying country. Yeah, and what's really interesting about this game is that you really aren't collecting items like you've worn in the last two games. You're collecting fruit, and there's also end games. This is actually a linear game, as opposed to just collecting all as many items as possible to achieve a goal. This is actually trying to defeat the bosses at the end of each stage, which is kind of a, a goal, but you have to keep on collecting fruit to survive. One of the major things about the game is you have to cooperate with your different captains, because yeah. there's three of them in this game as opposed to two. Using the, the gamepad, you actually have to direct your characters around the world, and you have to do this together. Yeah, in order to get yeah and this is actually really key if you want to get higher medals in the challenge mode, which is actually uh, the advent of Nintendo's uh, uh, downloadable, uh, downloadable content. Uh, this game has DLC for extra stages and even new stages at the end as well, though not actually new content per se. There's also a bingo battle mode, which I thought was really ingenious. Um, instead of just having uh, you collecting like a verse, like just things in a multiplayer game, basically you have to collect things in a multiplayer <laughs> game. But no, it's like it's got a bingo card on it, and you have to try to you know connect the f like connect four yep. in a bingo card. And also there's the special. There's also a macaroon that you can, victory macaroon yeah. that you can actually pick up on the other player's opposing team, and you can win that way. You can turn it off if you want. And it's very fun. There's a lot of different stages. Um, it's beautiful. It's a pretty beautiful new game. New Pikmin types, I forgot to mention. Rock Pikmin. Oh, yeah, Rock and, Pikmin and, and Winged Pikmin. And, Pikmin. and the day system has changed completely now. We have to actually collect... The, fr the fruit gives you more days. So you, ha you have to collect the fruit yeah. in order to survive in this game, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the month in which Pico 3 came out, we got Saints Row 4. This is a rock really on. massively crazy game. Well, what happens at Saints Row was already kind of crazy. Well, Saints Row the Third was pretty intense. <laughs> Saints Row, the original one, was pretty serious in tone. And then, and then it, it kind of... It's like Fast and the Furious. They didn't realize as the series went on that it got really crazy. They knew that eventually, you know what? We know what people want from this yeah. game. Let's give them 
the President of the United States and give him some fireworks and rocket well, pack. And <laughs> it turns out that Saints Row 4 was actually DLC, like an extra attachment uh, co campaign to, to Saints Row the Third. But because THQ was going bankrupt, Jason Rubin, who was the CEO at the time, said that game has to be a new IP, a, new, a brand new game. And then the uh, the IP itself got purchased by uh, uh, Soul Sil so by Silver. I can't remember the actual name, but Sil call it Silver's in there. Uh, and they published the game Deep Silver, and they published the game as it is. It's intense. It's it's pretty much what you'd expect from a sequel to uh, Saints Row the Third. Third. Then came the infamous Rayman Legends. Yes, we talked about this in the news video well, about 2013. Um, effectively, uh, Rayman Legends finally came out in, yeah. in September when everything else did. Yep. <laughs> um, as in case you didn't know, it's pretty much a side scroller was starring Raymond and his friends. And, yep. And you go to different worlds mm -hmm. through paintings that and you yeah. And the biggest addition was Murphy. If you're playing on the Wii U version, uh, you had the ability to control Murphy using the touchpad. I think also the Vita version and the PC version allowed you to do the same. But if you played with say the Xbox 360 version or the PlayStation 3 version, they allowed you to use a button press to control Murphy instead. And that was one of the big innovations they did while they were building it. They also added in probably about two thirds of the levels from Origins yes, as additional as, content. You take them lock though, and I think it's rather weird, honestly, to have that content there yeah. because it feels way out of place. At least when you first play Raymond yeah. Origins, it's like, oh, you're playing through a journey. Here, it's like, oh, we have there's levels just, here. There's no level. Yeah, I, I'll say uh, Raymond Origins. Why would you go back to that game now? I mean, you got <laughs> this game. Um, there's also a bunch of characters you can unlock. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new princesses yeah. you can unlock, and uh, there's uh, also crossover stages where other characters from the other worlds try to invade the other worlds. It's yeah, really strange. And the bosses are crazy. The levels are crazy. Again, looks beautiful thanks to the Ubi Art uh, engine. And yep. I hope they keep using that engine. Yep. And the game is called coming out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in like the next couple months. Uh, but the game is pretty much what you'd expect from a sequel to Raymond, uh, Raymond Origins with the addition of the ability to play. Mm -hmm. uh, was it worth waiting nine months for? Probably not. Um, but I think by the time it came out, I think everyone was like, okay, it's out. Finally. Yeah. And it's good that it's finally out. Apparently it sold okay. It sold okay. That's the best way to put it. Uh, okay. and that's the reason why it's releasing on all the platforms, because it can only sell okay. Now we just talked about Saints Row 4, but now we're going back to the OG. Grand Theft Auto 5. Yes, uh, people have been hooting and hollering for this for like I think three years. Now. It was really funny because when Grand Theft Auto Four came out, it didn't have a, as much of a fanfare. Oh, it did. You just you we you just don't remember. It was well, pretty big. Okay, it, it didn't have as much, it didn't sell like eleven million copies in half a year. I think just everyone was expecting it just to be the, the best the, thing ever. I think Grand Theft Auto because it's got the the Grand yeah, Theft Auto I, online. I, I, on I, th it. I think Grand Theft Auto Five definitely benefited a lot more from the way they marketed it this time as opposed to four. Also, now everybody and their mother own a PlayStation Three or, or three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty or a PC. Yes, uh, and uh, also it ha there's that. Oh, wait, no, there is no the PC online. version of Grand Theft Auto Five. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean that. Um, you might want to. Uh, there's a petition. There's a petition, yes, 200,000 passed. Uh, but anyway, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, you play as three different people, and each one is a scoundrel in their own right. Yeah, and they're all criminals, of course. That's how the games go. Really, who cares about the plot? The game is you drive around in a car. That and you, you do jump and up ramps. And you beat people with a baseball bat. I was going to say do some crazy jumps with your car. Well, you could beat someone with a baseball bat while you're making crazy jumps. With your car. With, your, with the baseball bat. And there's also the new online functionality. Yeah, well, apparently I, it was very glitchy, very microtransaction-filled. Not, not my, it's got some microtransactions, but I think part of the issue was that it had a lot of like server issues too. Well, they weren't expecting like, 11 million people to be playing online at once. Yeah. So anyway, the, the game is obviously like the highest-selling game of the year, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's it's solid. It's a solid entertainment game, though oddly not a lot of game of the year awards. Uh, I, think, I think I think I think The Last of Us proved that they. Like, yeah, I think storytelling like, I, could be done differently. Yeah, I think The Last of Us was kind of like above them. It seems to be like it was Grand Theft, it was uh, Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto V, Bioshock Infinite in terms of story, in terms of no, in terms of attention of interest of Game of the Year. At least that's what it, when it comes off initially. And now we have a story to tell you about the Stanley Parable. Yes, Alex was talking while his brother was also introducing the game. We should probably stop this right now, yes. because you can't do that voice. That, that's too meta. That's just since I was the one talking about myself, talking about you, talking about this game. Effectively, it's a, a narrative game. Um, there's no enemies. You just walk yeah. around, and what you do 
changes the narrative, and the narrator win sells it. I think yeah, it, I think without I'll, the narrator, this would not be a game. <laughs> well, that's kind of the point. Uh, it's kind of like how, uh, in a way, it's like Bastion, where it's like the narrator really makes the game but more this, this one is. The yeah. It basically gets rid of all the action and just puts it, boom, this is you, and this is the yeah. narrative. And it's how you, basically, it's about choices. Yeah. It's about how you get away, how you make your own choices, how you break fate, how you disturb, like, don't listen to what, yeah, what he said. I mean, if you follow the game's, what the game is, what the narrator's telling you to do, you get one ending. But in the end, you might also want to follow and break the tradition, and then you start hearing. Then that's where the game starts to go. Wait a minute, what's going on? And there's like seven endings. So there's and actually like thirteen or something like that. Thirteen there's, endings. There's lots of uh, Easter eggs. Uh, the game is actually an enhanced version of what was released a few years ago mm -hmm. using uh, the Source Engine. This is a completely new experience. And this one is uh, it's, a, it's an amazing game. If you haven't played, don't spoil it. Uh, no, we spoil it, ourselves. For well, of course we do. We, we spoil it, but don't you don't spoil it. You don't. You, you buy it and you play it. There's a demo you can try out too. And by the way, the demo has nothing really has to do with the, the, the game. It's <laughs> really hysterical. But that's part of the point. Uh, the Stanley Parable is really a good narrative game. Much like how Gone Home was, but a completely different spectrum. More humor. You like Pokemons? Because they came out this year. Pokemon X and Y. Yeah, Pokemon X and Y, as they were announced in January, uh, took place in a new region that essentially is France. Uh, yeah, they, it's, it's France. And uh, the, the twist is in this game uh, was essentially that you have a new set of Pokemon, only about 70 or so. Not a whole lot. Not a lot. It's actually the last, uh, least. Of the the least of any series. But the new addition was the Mega Evolution element, mm -hmm. which was that if you, a Pokemon held onto a stone, a special What's name, like a, a, yeah, a, a Glazikonite or something like that, and you have this like this wristband. wristband that at, the, at any moment, only one of your Pokemon can do this per map per match, but it you, they become mega evolved, which changes their stats and also gives them a new ability, and also changes their, their like, adds a new layer, like uh, Gengar, mm -hmm. um, he, it's Ghost and Psychic. Yeah, so that, that in intensifies. Uh, I think they had like, thir like 25 to 30 Pokemon mm -hmm. can do mega uh, Of course, this leads to plenty, question plenty of questions about future Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, obviously that means this is going to be a thing going forward. Uh, I guess that's probably why they didn't just make everything have mega evolutions. <laughs> Um, there's, uh, I mean, there's also the the big big change to the whole structure of the game, uh, fairy types. Yeah, fairy types. Fairy types are a big new thing. A lot of uh, and act finally something to destroy dragons. Yes, and apparently Jigglypuff can now fight dragons. <laughs> Jigglypuff the dragon hunter. Yes, um, but it's like so now a lot of old characters have been re uh, re themed with yep. uh, oh, fairies. Well, also, uh, we didn't mention this. The, the game is the first Pokemon game to be full 3D. No sprites. Yep, no sprites in it. Um. Though I think no 3D visuals. The only yeah. time you see 3D visuals is one-on-one -on -one matches, and it's not even that great of a uh, great, great frame, rate. frame rate. I think part of the reasons is their first really 3D game, so they are still getting used to the mechanics behind it. So if you were expect, so if you're expecting like the Pokédex 3D visuals, you're, you're not, not going to get, get it. That. You know, it still looks great, by the way, because it's got the cell shaded, yeah. tune shaded like style. Yeah, but it's just it's not. This is not 3D visuals. Yeah. This is designed for 2D experiences, and it works fine, given that. Yep, and they're going to have a Pokemon bank, which allows you to store more po of a Pokemon and whatnot from the previous games into here. And but that crashed that on, on Christmas Day because too many people had too many games. Yeah, so uh, that ga that's it's in not, the works. It's in the works. We don't know when it's coming out. And I'm probably going to assume, and I'm assuming there's going to be a Pokemon Z. But that, that's 2014. We're not there yet. That's our next or we're, we're, there, we're there now, but just not yeah. there yet. So the Xbox One launched, mm -hmm. and so uh, what came down to their games? You had Forza Motorsport Five, with, Forza which Motor. was loaded to the with, brim with, with microtransactions. Uh, yes, yeah, so a lot of people were not happy about yeah, it was, that. It's the, the element of you got to play this same mission like five times to make enough coins to get the next, or something like that. Uh, or you could pay us like, a, or you could pay us like ten dollars for it. It, it was way over balance, way over the top, and the, the way they argue, the way that the PR people responded was, "Oh, we'll make it like one fourth the cost for a weekend or something like that," and it was really a bad choice. I think they're fixing it overall, though. I think it just it just showed you a fear of the future, where a lot of everything they'll give you a game for sixty dollars, and it'll be just literally just the HUD. <laughs> and then you, and then you have to pay for everything else. Oh, you want to play single player? That's another twenty bucks. Oh, you want to play multiplayer? That's fifty bucks. Because I know you want to buy that. Yeah. Well, games are doing that to an extent already. Yeah. So with it's the whole concerned. season pass system. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other game that I wanted to point out was Killer Instinct. Yes, this one. Uh, we they, we knew they got their license. The the 
the license. trademark. Yeah, and and rare. You know, they have a whole list of IPs, and one of the oldest IPs they really haven't worked on was Killer Instinct. So we're like, oh great, they're gonna bring Rare to it. Rare didn't make it. Nope, Double Helix did. Why not? Why couldn't Rare make well, it? Well, Double Helix. Can, <laughs> well, first of all, it had some of the ex runner people who made. Killer Instinct. Okay, so and it fair. also had and Double Helix did have people who've worked on fighting games before. So Rare in its current form probably wouldn't be able to make the I game as good as it just was. Just as a side note, Rare needs to make something new, like a platformer. Yeah, not like not this Connect game. Sports stuff, but give give it give us something. You know, I you used to make so many games. Okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, um, but Killer Instinct reboot was so weird because it fell into that the freemium element where you bought for twenty dollars on digital form. You bought like one or two characters and then you had to spend more money per character and I have a feeling this is going to be the case going into 2014 where the game will add another set of eight characters but you have to pay per character I think, or in, in chunks. If I remember correctly I believe Killer Instinct is actually a free game. Uh, it's free you get you to play one character, character and we have to buy the other characters. Yeah Kano is the free character uh, but everyone else you pay unless you buy the pin edition where Penny Arcade got involved and said hey you could buy these fancy pins alongside it for a full game price. I don't like what this world's trending to. <laughs> Hashtag I don't like. Ha I don't like trending. But if you want to look at talk about the best selling games for the Xbox One and probably the PS4, we're going to talk about uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, or should we call it Call of Duty Dogs? Yeah, there's a dog in it. Bark, bark. Oh, uh, yep, there's a big dog in it, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's there. Call of Duty. Yeah, and that's really all it can be said. I don't know what else people are looking for. Uh, this <laughs> thick man. <laughs> thick man. Uh, oh, we didn't mention. Though, I have to say, the, pro there's more work put into Call of Duty than Madden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, don't forget uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Oh, that came out too. Um, yeah, that was actually. This is a cross gen. That, I think that was actually the highest selling third party game on PS. PS4. Probably. It was a cross-gen game. Um, you, you play as pirates. It's Assassin's Creed Pirates. Um, That's really all it is, Basically, guys. they got such a good response from the, the ship level in Assassin's Creed I can't 3. wait for Assassin's Creed Ninjas. They decide, let's make a whole thing about pirates. And I, I heard it was very well done. It was very... It, uh, it's that, more, it's yeah. less stealth, more action. Yeah. And I actually uh, was told... Uh, they actually said out uh, in the interviews that... Uh, depending on Black Flag's reception, they may very well just make a spin-off franchise in the Black Flag area. And instead, call, I don't know what they'll call it, but I, Black, they're going to say Black Flag and then something. It's a, Black Flag sounds like a pretty badass name for for a franchise for of pirates. pirates. You, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, another uh, multi-platform game was Battlefield Four. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, it's a shame. It really is. Yeah, the game looked okay. We talk. If you go to our E three videos, and I'm not saying go to our E three videos. Our E three videos. You subscribe. Uh, but uh, th we really were hyped by the game. It, okay, Alex, that was good looking. Yeah, they okay. Did, you know, completely Real destructible environments. Real environments. That was building awesome. collapse. Though to be honest, a part of me was wondering at the time: is that building going to always collapse, or is it like that's the only building that can collapse? But don't, don't ruin the dreams. Okay? <laughs> it's like Alien. They'll ruin the dreams. dreams themselves. The game is exceptionally buggy, buggy on and the they PlayStation haven't fixed floor, it. and they haven't fixed it. And uh, in fact, I think they got sued a couple of times for something I like that. Bet they did. Um, essentially, the game was rushed. No doubt about it. The game was rushed to come out for next gen launch, and they, they it suffered against because of uh, Call of Duty because if they didn't come out now, no one was going to buy it. Yeah, because that's the problem with with how, looking being it so coming around with Call of Duty is that. Yeah. If you don't come out at the same time, people are just going to keep buying Call of Duty and they won't have a, a yeah. want to buy your game. Yeah. Well, thankfully, Need for Speed Rivals is pretty good. There's mm -hmm. still glitches there. I've seen glitches happen. Uh, but There's glitches in every game. House. But uh, And also, the Need for Speed Rivals has concurrent gameplay. So when you're playing single player, other people are online playing in your game too. Yeah. So, I want to talk not about the third parties for PS4 launch. I want to talk about the like, you know, the first party games. Yes. Uh, uh, Killzone. Killzone's pretty run of the mill for the Killzone franchise. Uh, it's pretty standard, a uh, lot more color, Which action good, packed. Looks nice graphically. Yeah, but you can't, it's it's not like it's going to win, a, well, I guess it could win awards, but it's not going to blow people's minds it's not, the way that people expect it It's not it brand new, it's not completely innovative. It's still Killzone. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. with, with better graphics. But the other franchise, Knack. Yeah! Well, I was looking, really looking forward to this game. Uh, it was announced by Mark Kearney, who, who worked on uh, Crash Bandicoot. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt. 
The game apparently isn't good. Um, not in the say, not to say it's bad, but it's not good. Either. Basically, it's uh, you walk around and you attack monsters, and if they hit you once or twice, you're dead. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much that. That's the story. You don't even need to have anything more to the game. It's a game where you beat them up. You, it's a child. It's a game for children. You're a giant hulking monster that looks ugly because it's made of all these little pieces of. It's come on, that was just showing up the graph. And if you get hit once, you're dead. Um, yeah, and it really <laughs> isn't much platform. Well, maybe not. Maybe not just once, but you know, it's that's a hardcore mode. Yeah. Um, but maybe the problem is that. There's also a multiplayer. You can play multiplayer if you want to. And you can play on... Oh, actually, all your PlayStation 4 games can play on your Vita. Yeah, so that's probably like the best part about all the PlayStation 4 at this point is the ability to play on your Vita if you have a Vita. We have a Vita. We have a Vita. But we don't have a PS4. We don't have a PS4, Sony. We, we talked about the launch of the Xbox One and the PS4. Let's talk about the Wii U. Yeah, that little... Do you hear the crickets? Okay, there's a few. Okay, there's a few games on the okay. Pikmin three that came out. I mean, it was yeah. Wonderful One Hundred and One. Wonderful One Hundred and One was a pretty cool action based game. Uh, kind of inconsequential though, because it was didn't have much of a splash from the mainstream element. Yeah, it's not. It was kind of like written off. Yeah, written kind off. Of, it was kind of sad. It's it's it's, it's hard to play. Let's put it that way. It's hard to play. Uh, and then and there was Wind Waker HD. Wind Waker HD. Well, yep, it's Wind Waker. It's HD. It has a lot of added little features, which yeah, is nice. Nice little things. But it's not like it's not new. It's not new. It's Still, Wind Waker. It's, Wind Waker was good back in the day, and the last two dungeons are still pretty. Uh, yeah. They're okay. I mean, actually, there's more dungeons. It's no Twilight Princess. No, it's no it's, well, it's, uh, nothing's really much Twilight Princess. No, it's not. <laughs> um, the fast sale, the quick sale is good though. Yeah, can't. I can't but I want to talk about Super Mario 3D World. Yes, which is the biggest Nintendo game this year for the, for the Wii U. Yes. Um, you mean Super Mario 3D Land 2? No, it's kind of. Uh, it's essentially Super Mario 3 Land, but situated in such a way where it's more grandiose. You have four players that can play cooperatively. And each one plays time, differently. And you use the, the gamepad touchscreen on very limited occasions. So it's not like it's extreme um, force. You have the, and the biggest thing, the cat suit. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very fun. Yes. Uh, it's, it's very fun. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not willing to say it's game of the year. No. But I, I, I would, I would, I would say it's very fun experience. Uh, Colorful, man. And colorful and, and beautiful. Every time I see a new, uh, like the, the rain stage, yeah. the train stage, the rain, you know, the train stage, and you're like, you'll around, you're like, wow, why didn't Nintendo why, HD this earlier? Is, this is Nintendo <laughs> HD. This is amazing. It's a shame that the Wii U's not doing well. It's a shame that Nintendo's getting good quality graphics out, and now nobody cares that they did. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's 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 crazy. It's it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, but at the same time, it doesn't feel nearly as crazy as, as Super Mario as Galaxy. Mario Galaxy was, where it took risks. Yeah, this is not a risky game. This is not a risky game. It's I mean, there's plenty of innovation in the, the enemy stages. design, level design, and I wholeheartedly recommend it. But it's not the game that's going to make people go. This is what Nintendo is going to save themselves with. No, uh, it's a good way to start like the momentum to what will be this year, 2014. But it's not the game that's going to be all, be the be all. It's a good game. Um, and the Katsu, again, the Katsu was really fun, even if it's overpowered. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. So if you haven't been too busy playing uh, indie games in your PlayStation Vita, uh, there's actually a retail game mm -hmm. on the Vita that you might want to have paid attention to this year. Uh, a big one. Uh, we Tearaway. Tearaway. We saw this a long time ago. Yep, it, actually, um, it was actually like the pinnacle of the the odd but unique games that came from Sony on the platforms. You had Puppeteer. On the mm -hmm. PlayStation 3, which we didn't even discuss. Uh, and then you also had Rain, which was an interesting like puzzle adventure experience. Very, It was short, but but sweet. And Tearaway from Media Molecule on the PlayStation Vita. Uh, you play as a, a message to you. Uh, you play as the sun, effectively. Mm -hmm. Apparently. Uh, and uh, it's really an endearing game where everything is made out of construction paper. And even, we saw them at PAX, they even had... Concept art, which was actually the, papercraft. They yeah. actually said these trees that we made over here are concept art. We actually put them in the game. Yeah, and they actually had said uh, so much that uh, the actual uh, uh, the actual modeling process in the game engine was all to make it origami. They didn't fake anything. Everything in there can be made in real life, and everything in animate was animated in a stop motion. It's a very beautiful artistic game. I'd say one of the, perhaps the most beautiful game. That came out this year. Artistically, yes. Artistically. Kind of like Kirby's Epic Yarn. Was yeah, kind of like Kirby's Epic Yarn, except this is it, it, not in 2D, but in the 3D sense. It uses every element of the Vita, um, whether you yeah. like it or not, but it, it does it in a way that makes it so it's... You could tell it was made for the system. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a Vita game, not anything else. 
and it, it does a good job. And you it deserves your it deserves your interest. It deserves your attention. And then we move from the PlayStation Vita to the 3DS to show off The Legend of Zelda: A Link Between Worlds. Yep. This is effectively a sequel to A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. In fact, actually in Japan, it's a direct sequel well, to it. It's, it's actually it. called 2. Yeah, so uh, this game takes place essentially in the same in the Hyrule, same Hyrule in the, about a few, couple of hundred years later. Mm -hmm. They already have all the paintings of the history of, like, of what happened before. Um, there are some changes in the overworld, so it's not a, d a direct copy. Yeah, there's a bunch of new characters. Yeah, a lot of new characters, all, and they're a lot more personable in this game. I think it actually it helps the game overall that your characters yeah. are recognizable. And the the biggest innovation to the game is the ability to be pushed into a wall. Yes, you can merge <laughs> with the wall and become a drawing or painting. You can actually walk through the wall and actually run along edges, fall, fill, fall into cracks, and enter an alternate world called Lorul. Lorul. Which might as well have been the dark world of the previous game. Mm -hmm. but... it's, it's fractured, and so you have to actually use both worlds simultaneously. It's really interesting. And the big mechanic that they added to the game was the renting of items. Uh, thanks to Ravio, you can actually rent items at his shop, like the hookshot and the hammer, and you can go around and explore Hyrule and Low Rule with those items at any time you want. Of course, it costs you money, and if you die, you lose said items. Now, you can buy them for a lot of rubies, uh, and then you can actually go and upgrade them with uh, this thing called, like, a squid thing. The squid thing, the mice. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. And you can upgrade them, and they get stronger, and you can play the Low Rule dungeons in any order you want. <laughs> Complete openness, because even in Link to the Past, it wasn't as linear as you might assume. Yeah, while it, while it tells you where all the, in, in Link to the Past, it tells you where all the dungeons are, but they have numbers on them, and you really have to do them in the order they tell you, because if you don't, you, you'll get stuck, and you'll be screwed. There's some, I don't, I, I've understood there's some things you can go out of order. Even. But it's really not but designed in, But in that. Link Between Worlds, there really is a complete openness to what you can do. They don't even tell you which to go to next, right? Nope, they just have X's where the dungeons yeah. are. And um, it's really fun, uh, and hero mode is really hard, because everything <laughs> does four times the damage. So, uh, so yeah, th that's pretty much all the games I can think of at the top of my head without getting into all the obscure games that I don't have listed here. Uh, if, once again, if we missed the game that you enjoyed the most in 2013, message it in the comments below. Uh, that pretty much... Con con you know, expands onto all of 2013 for games. Mm -hmm. Pretty um, intense year. Do you, have, do you happen to have any uh, game of the year? I can't really say much. I mean, NES Remix isn't on this <laughs> list, and that's pretty fun. Uh, and I'll, but no, I mean, I, I played a lot of Picross, so I, <laughs> I'm kind of in this weird... <laughs> and uh, uh, we didn't even mention Candy Crush. Which or is, we didn't even mention uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2, which we won't discuss further. Mm. Um, but... I'm kind of, it's kind of, I mean, there's two games that really stick out to me. Oh, three games, okay, that honestly stick out for mm -hmm. me. Um, but they're just games I really like playing. Uh, Luigi's Mansion, uh, uh, Pikmin 3, and Legend of Zelda. But I think that, um, I think uh, The Last of Us is a really good storytelling of a yeah. game. Um, I think that for indie game, I think uh, Stanley Parable I think yeah. wins it for me. Parable's Please is very close second. Yeah, it's interesting. We can't. I can't really give a uh, game of the year because I barely played the games that are on this list. Yes. Um, I obviously need to play a lot more games uh, in 2014 to try and get a better idea. Come 2015, what would be my game of the year? Again, uh, if it was a game, if the game of the year for me was the game I played the most, it would either be uh, Luigi's Mansion or Zelda. But that's because I play. I play my 3ds a lot now. It'd be, it'd be a bit cross. <laughs> you're here first uh, our third minions game of the year of 2013 is Picross, Picross. Uh, Picross E1 or N2 <laughs> uh, most of these games here are very interesting you take a look at them yep. uh, rent them go Gamefly yep. or Redbox yep. or whatever you yep. gotta do yep. or buy them yep, yep, yep. alright we've been talking I am new we've been support. talking a while we've been yeah. talking a while so let's let's go let's skedaddle uh, click the left side to go back to the previous video of the Kickstarters and click on the right side to go on to our Next video, we talk about the predictions we made for 2013 and give our predictions for 2014 about a month or so <laughs> into the year. Again, uh, we look forward to seeing all the great games coming out in 2014. Um, hopefully, they'll be just as big as they were this year. Or last year. Or I don't even know anymore! Press the link. <laughs>